Okay, well, I guess this is going to be a second video because that just. I pressed something on my keyboard. So, yeah, this is. I guess this is perfect timing because this is the tarot, tarot part. Three. And split the deck. One, two, blam. What do we got? Well. Usually I go with the top card, but you know, whenever whenever the deck just flings cards out at you, you kind of probably shouldn't ignore that. So for Zen, and this is weird because I just uh, downloaded the show, Man in the High Castle. Satala. Which is not a negative card at all, even though... Sometimes the pictures can kind of seem gloomy or crazy. Number 16. And yeah, I do the whole tarot deck because I like... Um, the all the options, especially whenever you have like such good uh, information in your in your booklets, it, it, you can get a little bit more specific whenever you do that, or you can just use the major arcana and, and go straight to the point. Or if you want to get a little bit more in detail, you can use all of it. I'm sorry if I turn into a Viking on you guys. It's uh, it's in my blood. Massive bolts of lightning strike out of a stormy sky. A figure plummets from a stone tower toward the waters far below. Bad luck, disaster. Catastrophic change. Often we refuse to let go of our self delusional of our self delusion without literally having it torn away from us. True. And so, one way or another, the tower brings us release from our stagnant condition. Yeah, I know, this is like the card I need too. Fortunately, the tower is most often only a warning that a volatile situation is about to explode. If you haven't already learned the hard way, chances are that something major needs to shift. Some genuine soul-searching can save a lot of anguish. If you don't take action now, be prepared for the worst. The description of this card is even kind of like, straight do it, man. Damn. Sometimes the tower's teaching comes as a flash of insight helping us to see exactly what needs to change. This revelation can come at any time and in any form. So be prepared for guidance from unexpected places. That's beautiful. Just from what I've experienced here recently, that's, that's uh, yeah, dead on for me. And uh, as I'm pulling these cards, um, you know, it's not even though I say it's for one person or whatever, it's for everyone. Anytime we pull tarot or read tarot, it's always for ourselves and for the person that we're reading for and for anyone else who gets something from it. And you would be wise to give up your ideas of how things should turn out. For the way down from the tower is bound to be full of surprises. Very nice, very nice. Second person up. Electric towel. Electric towel. Who 
He's a very wise person. I definitely appreciate you know, all you guys. Even even if I don't draw a card for you, like that, the small little YouTube group that I fucks around with. You guys are all awesome, and I'm very appreciative of all of you. Split it three times. Electric Tau, your card is... The Seeker of Wands. It's not really showing up all that great right here. That's a beautiful card. So the vibes that I get from this very Aztec very uh, Mexican, um, deserty. Uh, they're holding a staff of with flames coming out. Just on the back of a. It's not really a. Kind of looks more like a uh, like a donkey slash horse mix. Uh, very fiery vibe with it. And they look just to just be chilling. Just be chilling. A man clothed in rich hues of red and gold reclines on the back of a roan horse. He wields a long, fiery brand. The two make their way across the seared floor of a valley as a mountain breathes smoke into the sky. Flowers bloom wherever they tread. When the Seeker of Wands walks into a room, heads turn, a charmer and a flirt. <laughs> he holds his audience captive with tales of action and adventure. Yes, you do, Tao. Don't give your heart over too quickly to him, though, for he is as unreliable as he is attractive. I don't think you're unreliable. This personality is constantly on the go, loving m movement for its own sake. Life is one big game to him, and tomorrow he will be galloping off again to his next conquest. He is the first to pick up a new cause, but also the first to drop it when something more exciting comes along. Seeming to go in ten directions at once, this volatile dynamo makes a grand show, but ultimately doesn't accomplish much. With others to help ground and focus him, however, this seeker can bring vital energy and confidence to any project. In a reading, the seeker of wands may herald the need for a change of scenery. He may also symbolize an adventurous but rash person in your life, or he may be pointing to tendencies within yourself to consider. And I like in this uh, little booklet that it gives you kind of like different interpretations like it may the reading may the card may be a person in your life and then it also may be uh, influences or aspects of yourself which kind of involves me like the same thing so yeah that's a good one and then both of those you know cards are they have a change theme. Next on the list. We're going to do Miss Skylark. Miss Danny. Miss Finger Foods herself.
One, two, three. What you got? What you got? The bees. The bees and the honey. I don't know if those are supposed to be bees. I'm assuming they are. You see her of pentacles. That's awesome. Yes, pretty good. Right. A young woman in simple garb sits in a meadow, studying the pentacle in her lap. So still is she in concentration that vines wind up her legs and a wild goat draws near. Overhead, honeybees fly by on their quest for nectar. Ah, I love the honeymoon. Oh man, that spice just makes it pop. The seer of pentacles is dedicated to comprehending the world around her. Quiet receptive, and often alone, she finds solace in the earth and her creatures. She is learning to hear the earth's wisdom and to trust her instincts. The spirit. Trustworthy and reliable, she can be counted on to give her all to a project. Deliberate in her actions, she moves slowly but surely toward her goals. The seer of pentacles describes a studious person with great focus and determination. Though you may find her reflected in another, she surely points to aspects of yourself to pay attention to. Good choice. Good choice. Next up, let's do let's do hobby. Hoppy Skyhopper. Who is this awesome? All you guys are awesome. Beautiful people. Beautiful souls. Spirits. Right. You got the five of pentacles. Let's see what this has to say. Okay, the Five of Pentacles. And, you know, and it's up to you uh, how you how you decide to interpret the message. Um, you could see it as a past, a present, or a future. Good, better, best. Um, you could see it as poten potentialities. Uh, to me, okay, this is called hardship, and it kind of seems like maybe, hopefully, this is kind of something that you went through and are coming out of, but let's see how it speaks to you. A shivering figure huddles in the doorway of a fancy church or home. The freezing wind piles snow up on the steps as icicles form on the sills. A stained glass window casts a warm glow onto the snow. Through the barred glass of the great oak door, another person can be seen. Times are hard. You may be homeless, jobless, or suffering from illness. Financial stress may be causing terrible anxiety. It may seem like your troubles have been around for so long that they'll never end. 
misjudging the reliabil reliability of others, including institutions of church or state, may have left you out in the cold, grappling with an un understandable collapse of faith in society. Uh, now this this is also a card that I resonate with. Whoever let you down, now is not the time to try to heal rifts in your relationships or to look for outside assistance. You have to draw on your own resources to make it through. So yeah, basically, uh, you can see that as you know, a card of hardships, or you can see that as a card of ownership. And that's that's how I kind of like to see that card. Starting to own up to, to what you know you need to do. To feeling your way through this path, to navigating with your feelings and your intuitions. And just allowing. Allowing things to happen, allowing things to fall as, as they should, as they will. And to try not to be attached to that. Just, just allow it to happen. Because whenever we can let things go, that need to go, especially whenever we've been holding on to it for a long time and we finally make that realization, make that disconnect, that's when things can come in and, and things do come in magically and uh, synchronistically. Next on the list is, let's see, how about, how about Joe Mama? about it. I ran into someone today who reminded me of Joe Mama. And it was nice to see that person. And possibly the energy that they share. Joe Mama and that person. The archetype. I like this card a lot for me. So I don't know what if you're gonna get anything out of it. Five of Wands. Two guys going at it with their sticks, you know, because that's what guys do. They uh they gotta measure their sticks against one another. See who the top dog is. Five of Wands I like this card. Whenever I drew it in the past, it was always like, yeah, that's that's what I should be focusing on, on, you know, what I was going through. Like, it, it was, and yeah, and the, basically these things, like, any kind of oracle or anything, it's just, it's just going to be nice reminders of what you already know. And sometimes it's hard to stay focused on, on the knowingness, on the gnosis, because of all the head stuff, all the what ifs and, and everything the paths and journeys and avenues that we can meander and go through and take. But it always, it always comes back to the intuition, the felt experience, the, the felt connection, what feels right. We're always going to come back to that. What feels like it's the correct path or the most beneficial path for that moment. And that changes all the time. So this is conflict. Two men spar in a dusty street. A broken staff lies between them. Clad in white, they pose like the fierce rooster in the foreground. The setting sun casts an auburn light across the city. This card shows a conflict with another. This dispute can range from a friendly debate to an explosive argument. The Five of Wands asks not to asks you not to run from confrontation. 
but to see what insights it might offer. So basically allowing the experience but not attaching yourself to that knee-jerk reaction. Allowing what needs to take place and, and staying grounded, staying in your center. Which is not always easy whenever we're fired up, whenever we're emotional, whenever something triggers us, whenever it's like something that, that can touch really deep that we're not always uh, super in control of always. As hard as it is, as it is, conflict often brings surprising gifts. Disagreements can help you see where to look deeper in a situation. Being challenged by another can give you a chance to get clear on what you believe and sharpen your ability to articulate your ideas. And by standing up for yourself, you build self-confidence. This is a really good card. If you find yourself fighting another, or, you know, fighting, arguing, um, going head to head. See if you can find the source of the trouble. It could just be a misunderstanding that has led to this fiery struggle. Then again, a genuine conflict of interest may be at the root of it. Either way, maintain a sense of fair play. There's no need for things to get ugly. If you let your anger get the better of you, the chance of something getting hurt, of someone getting hurt, increases. Lashing out may be gratifying in the moment, but real violence and enduring loss of trust may result. The repercussions could last for a long time. Be confident, yet playful in the face of opposition. That's very, very nice advice. Just don't get too cocky. Compromise may be necessary. Don't worry. Given the dynamic nature of the wands, your creativity is sure to surge and burn away the source of tension. Yeah, that's a good card. And I would, I would definitely say that Joe Mama is creative. Just in the things that she does, creates. And, and the same goes for us all, you know. We're all very creative whenever we tap into that, whenever we allow that to come forth. Okay, let's see. No, last but not least, we're going to do Big Nick's Me. Getting a lot of pentacles tonight. A six of pentacles. It's a pretty cool card as well. Clarity. No, uh, uh, no. How about charity? How about ch clarity and charity? A smiling youth dressed in rags sits against the building. A little dog curls up in her lap. She holds her open palm out to a richly dressed man carrying a set of balances in one hand and a pentacle in the other. Five more pentacles grace the stone wall behind them. The six of pentacles shows people sharing resources. Traditionally, this card has presumed the superiority of the giver. Yet it may be that the rich man holding his scales remembers how others have helped him. If you find yourself in need, expect help in some form with your financial situation, an inheritance, a grant, a gift, or simply some useful advice. The human heart holds a profound capacity for generosity, but be sure to be thrifty and to explore creative ways to meet your needs. Charity is not to be relied on as a lifestyle. 
If you are doing well, share some of your abundance. And remember, offering to teach someone a new skill can be just as valuable as money. Uh, way more valuable than money. Uh, that, that's the most valuable thing that you can do is, is uh, connect with someone, share share knowledge, share experience. Good shot, good shot. Alright, well, I hope you all enjoyed that, and thank you, and deep love to you all.